Hey traders, this is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Hope everybody's doing well on this Tuesday. What is today? July 25th. Good morning, Tony, Chandra, Matthias. If you guys can hear me, hey, how's it going, JP? Uh, if you guys can hear me, you can see my screen, then let me know. If not, then all right, good, 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 good. Everybody seems to be able to hear me. All right, so get started. Uh, you guys know the drill, uh, risk disclaimers, etc., and then we'll get started. Marin's asked, can we talk about the Russell 2000? Sure. Take a look at that. Hey, how's it going, Greta? All right. So let's start out with, we're going to start with gold. Hang on one second. Let me get myself a little situated here. All right. Gold. So. Still looking at this this gold situation, as you can see by my nice little red arc. Uh, still looking at this as a as a uh, an overall bearish situation, right? A bearish price sequence, kind of getting a a bit of a mountaintop here, uh, and we're getting with these. We've got these higher highs. We've got this. Then we've got a uh, a double top basically, and now we're at a really really big spot right here. Uh, we're we're here at this point where we've got if we go back to the weekly, the 2011 trend line. We're talking about it again. 2011, 2012. There was quite a good period of time that went by before we were trading around it again. Lots of trouble in 2016 trouble, big reversal bar last month. We've got the lower low we can see on the weekly. We're testing it now. So it's a, of course, being as long-term as it is, and with every week it gets longer and longer, uh, this is a pretty big spot for uh, for gold, all right? So uh, right now with this bounce developing into that area, this should be uh, this should be rather interesting. We've also got some some good horizontal uh, resistance as well. We've got this peak over here, some highs. You can see here clearly there's some play around here in the 1260s, uh, basically 1255 up to 1260. Yesterday's high was 1259, so we're right there. We're right there at that at that point. We did recapture this trend line. I'm I'm not super concerned about that. It was just one point where, uh, if you guys recall, that was with me last week, I was looking for this to be a point and maybe we would turn lower. Uh, didn't really get any kind of really good bearish price action around that line. So it was it was kind of, uh, it's, it's being ignored <laughs> just as the market ignored it. Uh, and we've got this bounce though now up into this area where it's it's very important. Uh, it, it, it this this trend line does pass through some price action, namely this this reversal we had on a weekly basis. Uh, so there still is some some leeway here on a on a daily basis. You know, it's a really long term trend line. So I like that question, DA. Uh, that's that's a uh, that's a trader question. I like it. He says, Hey Paul, throwing all analysis aside. Have you got a gut feeling about the potential gold move? Yes, I do. I think we're going lower. <laughs> There's my gut feeling. Uh, my my gut feeling is that we're going lower, uh, and 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 I guess it does kind of go with the analysis. Uh, it goes with the fact that the the chart is really, you know, until we until we get above this 2011 trend line, right, until we get above it and 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 thoroughly above it. You know, it's really, it's, it's to me, it's kind of like this. It's not going up if it doesn't really get above there, right? I don't think that's like a, that's not a, uh, that's not really a, up for debate. If it, if it maintains in a downward angle and it's below a trend line, then it's certainly not going up. 
I don't necessarily think that gold is, is going to five hundred dollars or anything like that, but you know, more more along the lines of, you know, could we get down here to eleven eighty? Could we have a nice seventy dollar move? Uh, maybe even maybe even uh, get down to these old lows back here in December, which which when you look at this, you know, this is getting pretty broad. I mean, we're going back to going back to, to February now, right? So February, and when I look at this overall price action within the downtrend, you know, it to me it's like this bounce. This is this was the bounce. And it's starting to roll over. It's kind of reminded me of when we go into oil. You know, I've, I've got a nice little arc drawn in oil as well. It's kind of a, the same thing. We're, we're, we've lost our we've lost our momentum, our mojo. It's coming around a really critical long-term trend line. Um, we've we've had the double top, the lower low from over here, and now we're looking to put in a lower high. And it's coming at an area where it's very important. Uh, and tomorrow we've got the FOMC tomorrow, and there's there's like zero expectation that they're going to do anything, and it's more about the September meeting. And I'm not going to go into great lengths, uh, I, you know. As you guys know, I keep this technically focused, but uh, you know the language is going to be what's going to be watched, right, for the September meeting, and perhaps maybe we there there's there's some something there uh, right now nobody really believes that the Fed is is as tough as they talk uh, that much you know seems to be true and so perhaps perhaps they're going to the markets are, are kind of discounting it uh, one thing I want to say is right now this is this is somewhat of a dollar driven up move but uh, which direction when you think about from where this peaked over here, before we had the the, the the double top, of course we had to have one peak to get a double top. But which direction has the dollar been going down? Uh, going down, going. It's been going down. <laughs> I answered my question with the question. So this is really around the same time. The dollar's been going down. Gold's been weak. Okay. Um, is there going to be some clarity provided uh, once maybe the market has some more clarity on on the on the Fed? Maybe they're going to start listening to the Fed, and that's going to give a little pep in the step of the dollar. And maybe this is going to then turn out to be one of those situations where we see the a, a re resurgence of the broader uh, gold dollar inverse correlation. But I'm not, you know, I don't really care about the dollar to be honest with you. I mean, it's again, we've been. The dollar's been going down, gold's been going sideways to down, and silver uh, is certainly uh, it postured even more poorly. So I'm looking for gold to turn down right around here. Uh, same thing goes with silver. We still have a pretty clear downtrend in place looking at the intermediate term since uh, in, in, in since uh, instead of, you know, like right here. April low, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Now, with that said, I don't think there's a ton of room. Um, there, there's a ton of room. Oh, Nikita asked about the how do I get my platform to look like this instead of online view? This is the online view, um, actually. Uh, trading view. This is this is the 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 online version. And as far as how I get it to look like this. It actually took me some time to figure out. I'm not the most. Uh, it, it takes me time. I'm, I'm a little slow on the uptake when it comes to formatting and stuff. I, you know, in a year from now, it'll probably look hopefully a little better than it does now. But <laughs> uh, just a lot of messing around in there and asking questions of other people actually. Uh, but looking at this silver lower lows, lower highs, I'm still looking for this 2003 trend line. All right, this 2003 trend line. Oh uh, boy, you know I hate when this does this. You know, I'm gonna, I was gonna talk up, uh, I was gonna talk up trading view, and then, then that happens, and then I, I don't want to talk it up anymore. Uh, 2003 trend line, pretty clean under some big lows. Obviously, 2008 was a pretty big low, um, and then 2015 was a pretty big low. This was actually, if you guys recall, this was uh, we had lift off. We lift off from the the Fed, and then precious metals rallied. 
uh, and now we're, we're, we're we got close. This is a weekly chart, but I, I, I think that we're going to get a thorough testing of it at the least, if not even break. Um, but at the very least, we're going to get a thorough testing of it. That's my that's there's my gut feel there, and down there is going to be a spot that I'm going to be very interested in. And so Tony, Tony brought this to my attention earlier in an email. So I do read emails, and Tony can Tony can testify to that. Uh, how how badly do hedge has okay? He says Paul. Given how badly hedge funds have done lately, should we regard their COT positions as contrarian indicators because they're short? Um, here's here's the thing about COT. Uh, this is going to sound this is going to sound a little subjective. I mean, a lot of the stuff is subjective, right? Uh, especially technical analysis and whatnot. So. The, the portion that I look at, and I'm going to show you guys a chart here, is I, I pay attention to the large speculators, which is your hedge funds, as, he's, as he was mentioning. Hedge funds, your CTAs, uh, your money managers, and I pay attention to what they do, and they basically do the inverse of what the commercials, the producers, the hedgers, the ones that, that actually have a physical uh, presence in the market, right? They're the, they're the producers of the stuff. Um, but anyways, I focus on the large speculators and in, in what they're doing, the, the trend following crowd, if you will. That's generally what CTAs do and hedge funds are. It, regardless of what they say, they tend to be trend followers. Uh, some, <laughs> some contracts they, they, do, they do well in. Uh, others they don't. Uh, sometimes it's about looking at the shifts in how they position and taking it into context of what's going on. So, for example, the Euro, uh, they, they do very well. Uh, I'm actually going to, I'm going to bounce an article into the chat box uh, before we, before we go on here. And so yesterday, so I do the COTs now. Uh, I started doing that a, a couple of months ago. Some of you might recall Jamie Setley used to do this. But anyways, uh, there's a link in here I want to quickly find. Uh, let's see here. Historical ability to identify trends. So, for example, in the euro, they've, they've been very good. Uh, they've been very good. This is actually a back test uh, showing the net positioning and then showing a long short strategy in the euro uh, well, you're, I put Euro USD uh, just to show the chart, but it's Euro futures, same thing. And if you look at the back test results, they've done very well all the way back to 2003. Over time, they've they've made money. Uh, I'll drop this link in there. You guys can go back. This was a while ago. You guys can take a peek at this at your own uh, leisure. Uh, but this, they they've done very well at at, at tracking the euro. Uh, and basically, the strategy was this: they go long, you go long. They go short, you go short. It's a long-term strategy. It's kind of a generic dummy strategy, but they've done very well in the euro. Now, other things they have not done so well in. And so getting to your question, Tony, it's taking forever to get to it, to the answer. Here is silver. So the green line, let's focus on the green line. Uh, the green line is a is the large speculators. And as I was saying before, this is the commercials, which is the blue, and then this is the, the small speculators. Some will call the red line mom and pop speculators, but they're not really mom and pop because they're still trading, they can still trade a decent amount of futures contracts, and mom and pop doesn't trade futures contracts. But anyways, so we're focused on the large speculators. Now, what is interesting here is that they went from a record position, right? So this is the recent move. This is a weekly chart going back to 2002. Very long term. Uh, they have they have gone from a record position and liquidated at a rate that they've never liquidated at. Okay, so they're they're right now. Uh, so you were you were mentioning that they're short. Uh, the large speculators are actually still long. In fact, they haven't been short, net short, since all the way back in 2003. They came very close on a couple of occasions over here in 2013, 2014, came close in 2015. They have not been short for 14 years, basically. It's a long time. 
uh, they're liquidating at a feverish, feverish pace. And with that in mind, what I'm thinking is, is that their liquidation could be coming at a time when perhaps they don't want to be liquidating. Uh, because if we get a move down, right, we get a move down into this, this long-term trend line and they flip short, to me, I would look at that as, as opposed to before where I was saying about the euro being, you know, you follow the, you follow the euro speculators uh, and they, over time, over the long term, they've, they've done well with, their, with that trade. Uh, but in this case, it, we could see a, a point where they flip short and I would consider, given the, the magnitude of liquidation, into such a long-term uh, support level that that could be considered the contrarian uh, indicator. Now, yes, they've they've been long basically from the top. So they've been long all the way up the big run-up that we had going back from 2000 and you know whatever it was. I think actually the the, the cycle low might have even been in the like 99. I think it was what it was for gold at least. Uh, they've been they've been long and uh, they've been long through it all and they've been. And, and they've been long on the way up, right? They've been long on the way up. They've been long on the way down. It'd be interesting to see them all of a sudden turn short. Well, not all of a sudden. It's taken this long, but they would be turning short at this this very key 2003 trend line. Sorry for all the uh, configurations here. <laughs> I'm having a little bit of difficulty this this morning. Uh, it'd be very interesting to see that happen. So that's something I'm I'm, I'm certainly keeping an eye on. Uh, if if we get down there, but right now the first thing is first, we are uh, I'm looking for us to turn back lower, continue the lower lows uh, into that area, and we do have we do have this whole trend line here that that we're turning lower from. Um, yesterday we had like a little doji ish ish type thing going on. It wasn't really all that convincing, uh, and and so I would like to see us turn with a little bit of momentum. We're starting to see that. So I, I think that maybe, you know, whether it's right here, uh, we stay turned down today, and then below yesterday's high, uh, that we could start to see that next down move unfold. And as we know, with, with silver, uh, it can be rather rapid. Uh, if it doesn't turn lower from here, then, then it'll, be this, it'll be this trend line coming down off the April high. All right, so we have two points here. I, I you know, I, I'd like to see us have a nice little down day today, and then and then look to to use this high yesterday as my, you know, kind of line in the sand for the near term. Maybe we'll get back up, test it again. You know, that's that's could be a possibility. But I think either here or at this trend line, we're going to see uh, silver then maybe make one more move down into this trend line. Uh, now. What makes me think that maybe there's always a chance it doesn't hold? We've got to wait for it to get down there, of course. Uh, is that is that gold looks like it wants to fall, possibly much more? And if that's the case, then silver probably won't hold that trend line. But it's you know it's one thing at a time, right? So we 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 put in our you know we always talk about this, and I say it every webinar. And those of you who join me for each one of them, you probably. Get tired of hearing me say this, but it's it's really you know it's kind of one move at a time. We have our levels in place. How does the market react to those levels? That's what determines uh, how we we want to position ourselves. And uh, on Thursday, we're going to talk about uh, in the becoming a better trader webinar. Many of you have expressed your interest in the candlestick webinar that I'm going to do. We will talk about candlesticks and how that can help determine the price action and whether you, you should be looking at those levels with a serious eye or, or not so much. You know, for example here, gold got up here, it didn't really, you know, I mean, somebody might say, yeah, you know, it put in a, like a little hammer or something. Um, not particularly my favorite type of uh, price action at a, at a resistance level. I like to see something more like a reversal bar of this nature. But yesterday we did have a doji in gold and we are starting to turn lower. So if we see um, I'll drop that link in there uh, momentarily. Nikita asks, "How do you do? I get to the webinar?" Well, that's a very good question. Um, I could I could uh, I could be a smart aleck and I could say, "Well, how did you get to this webinar?" But I'm going to give you the link uh, so that you can get to it. I uh, and one second, let me just grab that for you. 
all the webinars are on the on the same page and and uh, but I don't you know what I don't always put the titles until like the day before so sometimes you, you won't know uh, until the day before so it, it's one of those things where I, I kind of come up with the titles as we go but this is one that it doesn't have the title in there uh, Nikita but this is the link to the webinar we're gonna talk about candlesticks um, all right so let's move on to let's move on to uh, oh Marcy was talking about the one hour in gold huh we're getting down to the one hour uh, actually actually the interesting thing it's not it's not only a double top uh, at Marcio uh, it's it's a uh, it's it's a head and shoulders <laughs> we've got a head and shoulders there so I didn't even pull in I didn't even pull in uh, quick enough or, or more to a, a granular standpoint to even show that that we do have a head and shoulders here we've got a left shoulder head right shoulder we're breaking the neckline right now so we do have a and, and then that is surrounding a a doji right so a lot of times you'll get these technical patterns uh, from uh, surrounding some type of daily candlestick and I don't know what's going on here on the hang on one second there we go um, I apologize for the fumbling around I'm a little distracted right now um, all right so getting focused uh, we've got gold we've got this doji and Marcio was pointing that out uh, that we do have something developing on the one hour and I appreciate you pointing that out because uh, I wasn't I wasn't gonna wasn't going to get down to that level, uh, but that certainly is a a good valid pattern here. So we have the left shoulder, right? We can see that. We can see we have the higher high. We can see that we've got the lower high, which gives us our right shoulder. We can see we have a neckline and we're breaking. So from the shorter term, this is an interesting spot here. And if we were to look at this from, if we were to look at this, you know, even just as a a quick trade. You know, looking from 1258 to 1252, um, and it's it's about a six dollar move from there. So this is projecting down to about 1247. If you want to just look at this from a from the standpoint of a measured move uh, from the head and shoulders pattern, so it's just the height of the pattern subtracted from the neckline. Uh, that's that's how you get that 1247 area. Uh, so with that said. We've even got a, a short-term situation playing out at a bigger picture spot. Sure thing, Nikita. Yeah, I didn't mean to sound like a jerk there. <laughs> I was like, you can go look at the calendar. I probably probably would rub somebody the wrong way. Uh, I didn't mean to sound like that. Uh, U.S. oil. All right, so we here here's oil, right? This is what we were talking about going into this 47 area. This 47 area is going to get really important. <laughs> uh, WTI is going to get really important here because because we've got this 47 lows, right? We've got this trend line, we've got this uh, these 47 lows, we've got this bounce, and we've been talking about the 47 area for a while. Uh, and it mattered over here for a couple of days. It really mattered over here. And coming on approach to this, you know, I said, hey, let's let's look for a, some kind of reversal situation, reversal bar. And that's exactly what we got. We got a break on through. Uh, again, this will be something that we talk about on on Thursday. Um, I like these scenarios where it breaks on through, and, and, and maybe some of you recall that where we get a break on through a level, and then it basically is what it does is 47 is important, it sucks in buyers, and then it reverses, and, and then you know they're kind of left like hanging their heads uh, by the end of the day, uh, and and the you know the short sellers for for a moment have some victory. The 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 key though that was going to be important to watch next was going to be this trend line. Now I had it drawn in originally like this. Right? I had it drawn in like this um, as being like the possible extreme to this trend line by taking the lows. But clearly yesterday we reacted pretty strongly uh, off of this variation of the trend line. And what are we getting here? We're getting 
an ascending wedge situation. Now, an ascending wedge, as many will will be quick to point out, has a has a bullish has bullish implications to it, right? Because what you've got here is you've got a low, a higher low, a higher low, and effectively we've got uh, effectively we've got a flat top. We do have the reversal, but if you go off the closes, uh, you're, you're pretty much looking at a flat top. So you're, we're, we're getting pent up here. Now, with the higher lows, that is correct that, that ascending wedge can have bullish implications, and this certainly still could. But it's going to need to close above 47, and then it's going to be going against the trend, and it's not my favorite situation. Um, it doesn't mean that... that it, it's not one that shouldn't be traded from the long side if it breaks to the upside. I still would like to see a little more uh, price action in here before it does break out one way or another. Now, when ascending wedges form in a in a downward trend like this, uh, you can get some pretty violent moves because, again, think about this from a from a market psychology standpoint, right? You've got the higher lows in place, so buyers are are stepping in at increasingly higher prices. Uh, now, while sellers are still stepping at the same level, uh, they're kind of they're kind of putting the the squeeze on the on the shorts a little bit, right? Because it, it's it, we're putting some upward pressure here, and so when they fail to the downside, uh, you've got you've got kind of a confident an increasingly be confident long side, right? With the higher lows because they're willing to pay higher prices on the dips. Uh, that, that end up throwing in the towel and then as they start to become at a loss, uh, they start to sell and, and the selling can be, become pretty aggressive as, as stop losses are hit. Uh, you know, you think about it, that's, you know, that's why corrections, you'll see a correction and all of a sudden you'll see a really sharp move because basically anybody who's bought in this correction, as they start to, to lose money on their position, they will, uh, they will uh, throw in the towel and and start, you know, kind of self-reinforcing trend will start to develop to the downside as they all get their stop tip. So, right now, 47 has become really important. What I'd like to see is another failure from 47, maybe form out a little bit here, uh, another couple of days or so, and then get a break. Or if we get a break higher, we may have to respect that. We do have this trend line coming down. I don't like, I don't like ascending wedges that break against trends like this, just because the, they 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 can tend to break out and then fail, uh, which is why in that situation, if we do get a breakout, maybe a retest, which is my one of my favorite trades of all time, is the retest. Uh, you get a retest, and then maybe you know that way you get you get some good prices and and a, and a tight stop with a potential to to get a squeeze higher. Um, and Marcio asked about the the arc. Uh, so the arc, I was talking about that with gold earlier. How gold had an arc, uh, where basically you have, you, know, you got this, you got this uptrend, and then it starts to turn into a downtrend. The same thing, uh, but more. It's a more broad pattern. Uh, you know, you've got this uptrend with higher highs, higher lows, and then all of a sudden you've got these lower lows, lower highs, and at some point, you know, I'm thinking that maybe we're going to get some acceleration down into the 30s. And this could possibly be a, a good setup for that to happen. So we've had you know a sharp bounce, really sharp bounce. This bounce is not is not very sharp right now, right? There's a lot of it's very it's getting very jagged. So if this is turning out to be a correction, it's certainly not showing the same upward oomph momentum that we had before. So if we turn lower, and, and that's something we discussed before, is that is that if if this is going to turn into one of those situations where we're going to have a broad top, it's been going on since basically. August of last year, um, if this is going to turn into one of those things where eventually it's going to gain some traction and have a little more trend to it like this over here to the downside that the bounces should get smaller. So that might be what we're seeing here as well is that this, you know, this, this overlapping inability to push is starting to show that it, you know, on the rallies the, the market's getting increasingly tired. Right, and we're not getting the same big spike we had before. So this might become the point where uh, we really do start to see oil roll over and, and accelerate to the downside. But 47 is huge. If we get a big close up here, then it certainly helps open the upside. Um, you know, there's always, and this is the other thing. Whenever you're dealing with a, you know, moving against the trend, we could always get something like this. Right, we could always get. Uh, 
you know, we could get it kind of a, a an ascending wedge within a downtrend, and that tends to have bearish implications. So that's why I'm also hesitant, even if we fill out and we, we pull back, pull back here, we get another higher low and we break up, is that we may just be putting in you know a, a more complicated pattern here. So the bottom line is is that is that given the trend, I don't trust any bullish setups at this time. Uh, yes, Nikita, this I am recording this webinar. Uh, last week I actually forgot to record the commodities webinar. Uh, today I re I remembered. Um, so you can go and 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 check it out on on YouTube, uh, the Daily FX YouTube channel, and you can also. Uh, you can go to my author page and you can go back there and I always archive it later in the morning. So if you don't come one day or you want to show up late, whatever, uh, it, it, it's always being, it's always being placed somewhere. Um, moving on to indices. Oh wait, you know what? I want to talk about copper real quick because copper's on the move, right? Anybody trading copper? I don't really like copper, but it's, it's, it's on the move. And uh, it, it's on the move, and it's coming out of kind of like an ascending wedge here. Um, copper has a pretty high correlation overall. Like the last, I think, when you look at Aussie and you look at copper, like you, you don't you don't see the same chart, but they, you know, long term they have a pretty good correlation. I'd even argue that the correlation is better than that of the inverse correlation between gold and. Uh, and the dollar, um, and so, so right now, and you know, it's not real surprising that we're seeing copper make this move here. It is coming up on some highs. Uh, looking longer term, you know, we could make a higher high here. We've got some pretty good resistance then coming up uh, over 290, the 292 area. Uh, but it, this is certainly, you know, you look at this. It's it's kind of got it kind of got pent up and and. Uh, and, and formed a bit of a wedge, and now we're getting a, a, a nice squirt higher. So um, copper looks like maybe it wants to to progress on onto higher lands. Uh, let's go to the indices now. All right, so the Nikkei, the Nikkei is a tough one. Uh, this triangle, this is from my weekly forecast. Take that off there. Uh, could still be developing this is the beauty of wedges is they can still be developing it's sitting though right at this lower channel line so that's that's not like the greatest thing it, it actually closed below it today uh, overnight this is the this is the daily uh, this isn't the futures this is the intraday uh, session um, this is sitting at this lower trend line and we could form out a little bit more, make a wedge. I don't know. This is the this is where I I really just the Nikkei kind of kind of bothers me. Uh, it, it's not it hasn't in this year. It's really just been I mean it's just been tough. A lot of range. Had a couple big moves. A lot of range. You know you look at dollar yen. That's been tough too. And and so uh, all things all things Japanese right now seem to be uh, struggling a bit. Although we're going to talk tomorrow about dollar yen. Dollar yen's coming into an interesting uh, point here, so we're not going to look at it though. Uh, we'll reserve the uh, FX talk for uh, tomorrow's webinar. Um, let's go to Europe. Let's take a trip to Europe. Some of you are already there, I'm sure. I know, I know some of you are already there. Uh, so let's take a trip to Germany. All right, DAX. The DAX is is in this gap, the French election gap. Friday's down move ensured that. Now we have this head and shoulders pattern that is that is in play, but we're 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 trading around the most conservative version of the neckline, right? Which is taking this point, connecting under here. We we, we had a small close below it yesterday, but it wasn't real convincing. And now we're back above it. Uh, we're in this gap. I think that this is going to get filled. And we're in this gap. I think it's going to get filled. But I also thought that the the CAC was going to fill the gap uh, once it dropped into it, and it did not. So right now, that's indices are are, are tough. You know, they they really are. They're they're the, you know, you look at the U.S. It's it's higher, but it's choppy. It's, it hasn't been the easiest to 
to get a good direction on. Uh, the DAX looks like it wants to, to, to fall out of bed. Uh, certainly the euro has not been very helpful for this, this, this move here basically. So we had the other day, we had a really strong uh, euro move higher after the uh, ECB, and then we had a really strong move lower in the DAX, and then that followed through on Friday. And it seems that, it, that, that the DAX is really, really irritated by where the euro is sitting now over 116. Um, but, I, you know, I think this is going to get filled here. And if it gets filled, it's going to trigger this head and shoulders, which should mean that we're going to get a, a, a much larger move lower. Uh, and so, really, we get down here, I would say, safely. We'll look to be safe on it. We get in the mid 12 100s. Uh, we'll be below the neckline and we'll get the gap fill and we'll start thinking about some of these lower levels. The projected move based on this head and shoulders from the neckline is 11,645 approximately. Uh, don't hold me to it if it comes to 11,646 and it bounces and call me out that it didn't get there. <laughs> there it's an approximation. Um, but I do think that's going to happen, but again, here, let's take a look at the CAC. The CAC broke strongly into its French election gap. So you think it's going to go, and then it doesn't. And, you know, somebody asked, somebody asked, well, you know, don't these things typically fill really quick? And, and the answer is that, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, and we're seeing that with the CAC. The CAC is being very, very difficult. Uh, but I still think that it's going to fill. I mean, it doesn't really have that far to go. I don't, I don't think we're asking for a lot here. So I'm looking for the DAX and CAC to weaken here. Uh, now the FTSE is, FTSE has really become a mess. Um, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because I'm, I'm losing my overall conviction patience period with this thing. Uh, it, it was trading really well off this 2013 trend line, right? So this is just a topside trend line that goes over the 2015 highs uh, back here from 2013. It did a good job of keeping us in check in January. We can see that we, there was a lot of points were traded around it and now it's just, it, 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 it violated it to the upside, to the downside. It's trying to recapture it now. Um, so it's losing its influence. And once a line loses its influence, you got to start really taking it for uh, you got to start taking it with a grain of salt because because it it, it means that the market is is no longer uh, so much concerned about it. Uh, there is still some volatility around the line, but it's not it's not giving us any kind of good. You know, even over here we had a nice little turn lower from it, uh, but now we're starting to just carve back and forth through it. So the the volatility doesn't really offer us anything in terms of of being able to come to any uh, conclusions. Um, I, I'm having a hard time with the FTSE. The FTSE, you know, if you want to look at here, it, it's coming off this trend line. I, I really don't want to, I don't want to deal with the FTSE right now. It's, it's kind of tough. Uh, let's go to the U.S., take a look at the S&P. Somebody mentioned the Russell earlier. Um, we'll take a look at that as well. This box I drew in here was something that I was, this was kind of, you know, I would talk about scenarios and, and, and all the time and one of the scenarios that I thought would be best, either A, two scenarios, one, we get a pullback and retest the, the prior highs for a possible uh, low risk entry from the long side, or we get a consolidation period after breaking out. Okay, so if we do, and that's what we're getting right now is kind of the sideways price action. We can get rid of the box. Um, we do have it, it. It appears now that it's holding kind of right on right on this March topside trend line and below this November slope. So the November slope's got some inflection points. That's where we came in. Uh, we're kind of getting pinned between the two, uh, but a little period of consolidation here, and I think maybe we'll we'll get a little little push higher. Uh, but it's going to have to it's going to have to uh, you know continue to hold right around here. Um, it, it doesn't make it for the easiest long entry. Uh, the best entries on indices in general tend to be after you know have a nice retracement. Consolidations can can lead to failures, uh, just like this consolidation led to a failure. Uh, the better thing to do was to to, to buy into the down move. Um, 
so I think that right now the S&P is holding pretty strong, so it's, you can't really say that it's not. Uh, and, 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 and giving the benefit of the doubt to the top side. The NASDAQ 100 broke out. It's holding those old highs. Uh, and so until it, it shows us some real good, you know, maybe we, we get a nice big down day. Uh, I don't I don't really, and even then, depending on how big the down day is, like this, for example, is a big down day and you're expecting follow through and you don't get it. Um, that's just been the nature of this this bull market. And and so it's a bull market until it's not right. So the short side has been been obviously been difficult. Now let's take a look at the Russell. So I don't really have any markings on this chart uh, in the Russell. I, I have markings on another chart, so I'm gonna kind of throw some in there. And right now, the Russell the Russell's been a little sluggish. Uh, we've got this topside trend line that we just turned lower off of, right? So we've got this. And then, if you want to do this, we've got that. Now, what do we have? What do we have forming here? We've got we've got a, a, a wedge starting to develop here. Now, the wedge could lead to a you know a, the, the trend is higher. Can't deny that stocks are still pretty strong. We could get a wedge here, and we could see small caps start to outperform and and take a shot higher. Uh, and the wedge could also form out and break the lower side trend line. So I guess the bottom line is what I'm trying to say is that is that we get over here, maybe maybe you know a little more uh, dinging around. Now we are coming into August soon. August, barring that we have any kind of major catalyst. When I say major catalyst, I mean something geopolitical, uh, something. Something that really rattled the market. August can be a very quiet month, um, and it can be kind of a a month to to in, in equities especially. It's kind of a vacation month for for managers, hedge fund managers, big managers before we, you know, or for anybody for that matter. But I mean the the people who move the markets the most. Uh, it's a vacation month for the kids. Got to get back to school. So it can be a quiet month and so expectations as we move into next month need to be tempered. I know people do not like to hear that but with that said we should always be, excuse me, if you're not on vacation you always should be vigilant about uh, the possibility of volatility uh, and uh, an upstart and volatility uh, at, at any time. Uh, but yeah this this is certainly starting to take the um, the the look of a of a wedge and giving the trend the benefit of the doubt, you know, it seemed like it would probably break to the upside. So we could see some some small cap uh, leadership, which would consider be considered a bullish thing. Uh, but then again, we could also get a breakdown. So we'll have to wait on this a little bit. But we do have some converging lines, which is nice. Uh, that's it for today. Ran through some commodities, some indices. And uh, we've got some things to look at. We've got some some levels there, gold silver uh, oils becoming uh, of, of interest here as it gets wedged up against that 47 line and uh, then we've got and then we've got these indices that are a little on the tough side so I, I think that for me it, the focus is more on the and I, and I like indices but I think the focus is more on the commodity uh, block than anything uh, this is a link to tomorrow's webinar we'll talk about FX uh, ahead of the FOMC, so you guys can join me then for that. And uh, we'll, you know, if you got any FX questions, uh, DA asks you, how can we find you on TradingView? You know, DA, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I, I use it, uh, I use it for 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 charts for the webinars. I use it in, in articles and whatnot. Um, I don't actually publish anything. So I never hit the publish thing. I always hit the snapshot. Um, I don't. I think I have maybe like one thing published, uh, and I, it's just something I guess I really haven't got myself accustomed to using. So I, I'm I'm not really sure. I I think my name is Paul Robinson FX, but I don't publish anything on there. So I probably should. I know some guys do, some don't. Uh, so that's that's that. Um, sorry. Um, 
All right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll talk. Uh, we'll talk FX. So if you guys got FX questions, that'll be the time. Have a good one.